Hi, my name is Ryan from Turtle Bay Exploration Park. Thanks for joining us. Did you know that during the gold rush, it wasn't the miners that struck it rich as much as the store owners and the people that charged to wash the laundry? Learn this and more as you spend some time with your favorite skunk sweet pea, participate in a science project, and learn about some plants you may want in your own backyard. All on this episode of Turtle Bay TV. Welcome to Turtle Bay TV, your personal virtual experience of everything Turtle Bay Exploration Park has to offer, including education, animals, horticulture, exhibitions, and more. Only at Turtle Bay. Okay, so for our science experiment today, yeah, it'll just require a few items that you might already have laying around your house, like hydrogen peroxide, dish soap, food coloring, yeast, and then you'll need some containers. Um, so, so empty soda bottles or water bottles will work just fine, or um, tall, skinny water glasses would be okay too. So the first thing you wanna do is empty out your yeast packet into a small bowl like this one with some warm water. And then you wanna make sure that you stir it up really, really well, okay? Then you're gonna take your hydrogen peroxide and put just a little bit in each of your containers. You could just do two, one container, but we're gonna do three because we're gonna do make it a little colorful today. And then you're gonna give a squirt of dish soap. And then just a couple drops of food coloring. Okay, now before we mix the last reactant we have, the yeast, we're just gonna give all of our cylinders here, a nice swish around to make sure they're all mixed up. Okay, so our last ingredient or reactant is our yeast and water mixture and we're gonna add it in to our graduated cylinders to see what type of chemical reaction will occur. And as you can see, when we mixed all of our ingredients together, um, they formed a chemical reaction. So there was changes in the reactants and they created a new product, um, which in this case, we have foam and a little bit of heat even and oxygen. And that's it for our science project today with Turtle Bay Exploration Park. Hi, my name is Julia and I'm the Curator of Collections and Exhibits here at Turtle Bay Exploration Park. Today we're in the History Gallery, which is a permanent gallery that talks about why people came to Reading. Everything from the gold rush, to the railroad, to folks who came out to work for those particular industries. We also talk about our Native American population here in the region and how this settlement affected them. This hands-on area is great. They get to pack the pack saddle and find out just how few provisions you could bring with you. And they find out things like prices during the gold rush were actually proportionally higher than they are today for luxury goods like sugar. They learn about maps of our area and get to compare information. It is a really vital resource for our region, especially for school curriculum. And believe it or not, it wasn't the gold miners that made bank, it was the people who ran the stores and the ladies who washed the laundry. Not everything in this gallery is permanent. We do a lot of changing things in here as well. Let's go over to Spotlight on North State History. Every few months, we change out Spotlight on North State History. It's a great way for us to feature our collection and tell in-depth stories about the North State. Right now, we're talking about Robbers, Thieves, and Murderers, Shasta County's Sordid Past. A lot of people know about the Ruggles Brothers who were hanged here in Reading for their stagecoach robbery, but people don't know as much about some of our other miscreants locally. So we take a deep dive here into that history. This exhibition is special because all of the legwork, all the research is done by our dedicated volunteers who pick a subject that they think is interesting that they can back up with objects from our collection. They choose the objects, they write the history, 
And the curatorial team takes that and turns it into this little mini exhibition here in the history area, which highlights so many amazing stories. We don't just talk about robbers, we talk about families, we talked about how Reading became Reading, spelled the way it is with a D D and not A D. We're really lucky to have this area so that we can dive in depth into our local history and give that back to our guests so we'll know a little bit more about Reading and the North State. Hi everyone, my name is Sharon Clay and I am the curator of animal programs here at Turtle Bay Exploration Park. And today I have here with me Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea is a striped skunk. And like all of our animals at Turtle Bay, she's actually non-releasable. She's a rescue. So Sweet Pea was found in Shingle Town, California, on someone's driveway. And she was itty bitty. They thought that she actually was dead. And so they grabbed a shovel to pick her up and toss her away. And luckily they realized she was still breathing. So you ever find injured wildlife, you take them to a wildlife rehabilitator so they can try to get them back out into the wild where they belong. Well, they brought Sweet to a wildlife rehabilitator, but they realized that she wasn't going to be able to survive out on her own in the wild. So she came to us at Turtle Bay at eight weeks of age. Uh, Sweet is now almost seven years old. So she's been with us for a while and she is an amazing educational ambassador for her species because people think a lot of crazy things about skunks. You see a skunk, you want to run it for the hills because the tail's up. But the tail going up just means they're at a heightened state. She does it a lot when she's feeling playful too. And what you really want to watch for when you see one of these animals is them stomping their front feet and scraping the ground as they back up. That's actually their warning that they're going to spray. And if you don't heed that warning, they can spray that pungent odor up to 14 feet accurately. Now, if you see a skunk out in the wild, the best thing to do is just stop and wait. They'll just wander about. These animals, they're actually completely defensive and they kind of get in their own little world. So they don't even notice you're there sometimes. Just stay still, they'll wander about and go on their business. Stomping the feet, that's another story altogether. Hi, I'm Lisa Endicott. I'm here at the McConnell Botanical Gardens here at Turtle Bay. Um, and today we are talking about plants that bloom at this time of the year. Right now we're in mid-March. And I am standing next to a euphorbia and there's lots of different types of euphorbias. There's some euphorbias look like cactus. Um, these euphorbias uh, that I'm standing next to right now, these are euphorbia cariacus and their Euphorbia cariacus wolfinii. And the wolfinii is particularly large here. You can see I'm, I'm five foot nothing, so you can see how tall these guys get. And they bloom for a very long time. And when they're done blooming, the foliage is just spectacular. And these are one of my favorite plants here in the gardens. They're so easy to take care of. When you have stems, that um, that are old and are you know uh, dead and no longer attractive. You just go ahead and reach in and cut those guys out. But other than that, once a year kind of maintenance. That's it. That's all they need. These are from the Mediterranean basin and they grow next to rocks and kind of out of rocks almost. And they are very drought tolerant which is perfect for our Mediterranean climate zone that we live in here in Redding, California. So now we're gonna talk about Euphorbia rigida. Euphorbia rigida is a ground cover Euphorbia and it likes to seed out. So we started with 12 plants in here and now we must have over 100. Um, and they are happy growers, fast growers, very drought tolerant, they can also grow and bloom in shade. And I think every garden should include Euphorbia rigida. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for more Turtle Bay TV content and subscribe for email updates at turtlebay.org.